This is the story about how me and Valerie almost burned down the whole street. How I almost blew up the whole block. Got arrested, burned the piñata, and all for the love of that money. Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up guys? My name's JC. I am Wrong Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. You know what it is. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, subanse a la suburban. We're gonna go down memory lane today. I've told you guys in the past, you know, that Valerie was the main person that always taught me the game when I was young. And the biggest drug dealers ever to appear in a Chicago federal courtroom were sentenced today. Identical twin brothers, Pedro and Margarito Flores, were operatives from the Sinaloa Cartel of Mexico. We were responsible for the lighting of the Chicago themselves were major players in the drug game for years, smuggling unheard of amounts of cocaine and heroin, earning almost two billion dollars while shipping drugs as far as New York and Washington. The two who grew up in the little village neighborhood have been in the witness protection program since they pleaded guilty to drug conspiracy in 2012, and their families have been given new identities. Pretty much, she taught me how to make money and she connected me with the people. She was always a go-getter, always getting that street life, always always living that street life and always making that money. She always got herself what she wanted and she taught me how to do it. I was really young when this happened. I think I was like 15 or 16 and she's like three years older than me. so. You know, that just shows you how deep she was in the game. <laughs> but, before I get started on my story about how we almost burned down the whole block, almost got arrested, pretty much almost killed ourselves, I'm going to share a little insight with you guys. A lot of people have died doing this back in the day, and who knows, maybe they're still doing it. But, when you're working with cars and you're sending them to Mexico with double gas tanks, it is a interesting thing because back in my day when we were doing it you know you would do a double a double fitted tank in a car that fits anywhere from 30 to 40 kilos in that car it runs on gas for about six to eight hours so on the highway it does pretty pretty good now you take 40 kilos and turn those into 88 pounds, right? Now let's do the math. You're paying 40 for 40 kilos in Mexico and Apasingan where we were going, you're we were paying two thousand dollars already packed and loaded into the gas tank. Alright? So that's that's about 50 bucks a kilo of weed over there. You get that to Chicago, you take it out without, you know, no, no mishaps like gas falling in. Because sometimes, you know, shit would go bad where the car would break down, we would have to leave it in Mexico, or there would be a leak in the double, double tank and gas would get into it and, and the whole weed would smell like gas, nobody wanted it. We would still be able to get rid of it. 
but it would be very, very hard. But, like I said, let's do the math. Now you got 88 pounds of really nice, good weed. Yeah. That turns out to be 46K. You pay the driver. If you're cool with the driver, you have love for him, you, you're taking care of him. You, you, a driver was making anywhere from seven to 15K. Now, did they have people they, they took advantage of and they paid a lot less for it? Yeah, I, I ran into a lot of people that actually got, you know, you know, and that's, that's on them. I guess they didn't know better, but anywhere from 7K to 15K. So you're still left with a pretty good amount from 46. You know what I mean? And you're sending six to 10 cars per month. That turns into a little bit over a half, a quarter million dollars. So, yeah, just a little insight, you know. <laughs> we were young, we were making money. We thought we were making big money, but you know, like I said, Val had put me on on this game. She had introduced me to the family, and you know, uh, I was making money at a really young age, and I was happy. Actually, my first trip was 10 G's. I was 16 years old, 10 G's to me, it was like I was on top of the world, so it only got better from there. <laughs> so, without no further ado, let's get into the story. So, we were in the garage in the back of her house, right? And we were unloading three cars. So we're, we're taking the gas tanks down, we're opening, up, we're opening them up, and Really think about when I say that a lot of people have died doing this is because any spark That falls into that gas or or into that tank Could cause that to turn into a bomb Yeah, a lot of people have gotten blown up a lot of people have gotten burnt and I have another story I'm gonna share with you guys later in the week about someone like that, but You know you have to be very very careful with any spark any anything could go wrong so that day we figured that out the hard way <laughs> so that day we're unloading three cars right so i'm taking the gas out of the tanks and just you know just i, I was like i told that i was like where, where are we gonna throw this are we gonna keep it in buckets or what are we doing she was like not nah, just throw it throw it down the drain so i started throwing down the drain throwing down the drain right and you know, it, it turned out to be a lot of gas because it was three cars and we were on the last one, right? And I'm putting the gas down, putting the gas down the drain and all of a sudden, I hear boom, boom. To me, it sounded like they were kicking the door down at the house. So I was like, we're getting raided, we're getting raided. And I was like, calm down, calm down, calm down. And I was like, we're getting raided, we're getting raided. And then it went boom, 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 boom. But it sounded like it was getting closer. And it was, it was crazy how it felt because I felt, I, I, I swear to God that it was like, I felt like they were kicking in the door, but at the same time, an earthquake was happening. Yeah, a little weird. But then it went boom, 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 boom. And it came out, it came closer. And on the third one, it went boom, 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 and it came, Closer, closer, closer. Then a fucking flame came out of the fucking of the uh, uh, the sewer, you know, uh, on the floor, and just blew up like this. I can't even explain it, man. It looked it was the size of a fucking Christmas tree. The flame came up to the air, you know, touching the roof. It, it burnt everything on the side of the garage. So we start hearing sirens. So. <laughs> You know, everybody on the block actually came out. We run out, leave all the fucking weed in the garage, close the door. I left the water running because, I, you know, when the flame was coming out, I was trying to like throw water on it, throw water on it, and, and you know, I didn't do shit, but I was trying to do whatever I could. But me and Val were like panicking, right? And we close the door, I left the water running. We walk out, the fucking cops show up. The cops are coming in through the front in the gangway, and the fucking firefighters are coming in through the back. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit, man. So I guess every explosion that happened, P 
people's houses were the flames were coming up through the to the sewer like fire was coming out so that's why someone called the firefighter and someone called the the police right so the police is coming up that was talking to them you know keeping them like a little bit away from the garage i'm only here watching the firefighters come in you know they're asking me i was like i don't know what's going on uh i i i forgot what what we were gonna have a party or something for i don't know if it was val's son or something but we had a pinata downstairs on uh, in in the basement and it was next to the to the one of the uh sewer line and it burnt the pinata completely down so the firefighters were down there you know uh, throwing water on it and and all that shit and you know after that everybody left right police left val managed to get them to leave firefighters left right when the firefighters leaving we we're, were like a little nervous you know because we got that shit at the garage and the firefighter one of the firefighters hears the water in the garage so he's like hey there's water running in your garage and uh i looked at val and val was like yeah yeah it's it's locked we don't have the keys it's usually always leaking and he looked at us and I mean, they got in their truck and they left, right? And me and Val looked at each other and I was like, holy shit. I was like, do you know we almost fucking blew down your whole fucking house, garage, maybe even the fucking block. And we looked at each other and we, we, were, we weren't really thinking nothing because we were still in shock until we went downstairs to the basement and we seen that the pinata was like completely burnt down to the ground. Then we looked at each other and started fucking rolling and laughing because the crazy shit that we were doing, like young, and I, I mean, let's admit it, not a lot of kids our age were pulling in the money that those first $10,000 that I made actually made me a little bit more hungry because before that all I did was, you know, sell dime bags, or I would sell cocaine, but it was small quantities. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing big. And when I made those 10 grand and then second time around, 12 and 15, and then I started getting divs on, on some of them, it um, started to change, change me where like I started to dress different. I started to, to want more and I wanted more money. And even though I had all that stuff back then and you know, later on I made more and more and more. I, I was still I was still unhappy and I was still very, very much still hurt about all the things that had happened to me as a kid. And you know, money doesn't buy happiness. Does does money make life easier or, or, or not necessarily better? Just easier. Yes, it does. But then who who would we be if we didn't have no struggles in life? Because I believe now that you know, struggles and pain actually do build character and do make you a better person. And when you don't have those, then you kind of just grow up, I guess, normal. Just, you know, without a care in the world. Because today I value every second and every every minute of my life because, you know, I'm, I'm free, I'm not in prison and I'm not having to look over my shoulder or, or just worry about who who's the next person I'm, I'm gonna sell a brick to or who's the next person I'm gonna get rid of this to and did they pay me? Did they rob me? Did they tie me up? Like all those things and like was it worth it? Nah, it wasn't. It wasn't. I don't care how much money I made or I don't care how, what I had. Uh, you, you, you think it is in the time when you're on the street doing that shit and, and it's, it's not. It's not, you know, um, and I think that most people that have made it out the game and, and are out here could see that, could see that it wasn't, it wasn't worth all the headaches. It wasn't worth, you know, yeah, you're making 10, let's say 10, 50, 100 G's, you know, on one deal or, or whatever. And it's a lot of money in one rip, but at what cost? What comes with it? You know, the cops are watching you now. The feds are chasing you around. People want to kill you and rob you. Um, you have to sleep at night with one eye open because you're gonna think that people are gonna kick your door down and it's it's constant it's a constant nightmare so was it worth it no but I do remember where I came from so that way I can look back and remember and not make the mistakes that I made back then you know what I mean and I laugh about all the stupid shit that I did back then because 
I, you know, I did make it out. I did make it out, and I, I am doing something with my life now. The biggest, the biggest regret most people have is, you know, what did I do with my life? You know, on the, when they're dying on their deathbed, like, what did I do with my life? Did I live my life to the fullest? And, you know, I feel today, if I was to die today, I would feel like I did live my life to the fullest because, yes, I made a lot of mistakes, but, yes, I learned from them. Even though it took me a long time to learn, I still learned and I still moved on and I still became a different person, you know, and I became JC from Wrong and Strong. It is what it is, man. Hey, if you guys want to check out, you know, uh, Cartel Wife's uh, YouTube channel, check it out. If you guys haven't read the book, read it. You know, it's a pretty interesting book. It's one of those books you can't really put down. You start to read it and it's full of action, sad, cry, you name it. You know what I mean? And you have to separate the wives from the narcos at one, at one point in the story. So, you know, my name's JC. I am wrong and strong. Hey. Don't judge nobody, stay in your lane, live savage, and remember, you only have one life to live, but if you live it right, one life is all you need. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.